This here is a Genesis GV60. And you're thinking, no, it's not, mate. This is a made up car from Grand Theft Auto or something. But I want to talk you around it because this could be one of the more interesting all electric Tesla rivals for 2022. So what exactly is a Genesis? Well, in the beginning, there was Hyundai. And well, Hyundai's been making really good cars of late, the N hot hatches, the Ionic family of electric cars, but they've got ambitions to grow and take on all the premium players, not just Cadillac right here in the United States, but the likes of Jaguar, and of course the Germans, the big guns, Audi, Mercedes, BMW. To do that right now in 2022, you need an electric car, you need a bespoke EV. So that's what the GV60 is here to do. It's here to say, I've got plenty of range, I've got interesting tech, interesting looks, and you should take the Koreans seriously as a maker of luxury goods. So what about the looks? Well, you can't make a splash in the electric car scene with a boring looking car, not unless you're Tesla. So what's Genesis gone for? Well, we've got this quite flush clamshell bonnet and big grill here. Electric cars didn't really need a big grill, but this one's got active shutters that close for aerodynamics or open to help cool the battery. And it makes it fit in with the rest of the Genesis range, as does these sort of split all LED headlights. I think they're quite handsome. Got some quite fussy, but again, interesting looking alloy wheels. They've had some fun with those, haven't they? Flush door handles down the side, very kind of new Range Rover. They will fold in when the car's locked or when you're cruising, just to try and cut that bit of drag. And then the real kind of headline styling feature is this zigzag. This is supposed to invoke the look of a thunderbolt to make you think, okay, electricity, that must mean it's powerful. That must mean that it's zippy. I'm not sure. If it really works with a car that's so curvy elsewhere, but hey, it's something to talk about. It's a conversation starter. Around the back, it thinks it's an old Porsche 911. It has a ducktail spoiler. This doesn't pop up, it just stays put, but it helps the air cut smoothly off the back of the car, and that's what increases the range. More split tail lights at the back, and sort of a suggestion of a diffuser, but no fake exhaust. So on the whole, what do we think of the looks? I mean, I'm no great judge of styling, but I can see lots of bits of other cars in here. Maybe a little bit of Bentley, maybe some Nissan Juke, and dare I say it, a little bit of Tesla Model Y. But overall, I think the GV60 does work as a interesting looking kind of quirky crossover. Okay, just in case you can hear what sounds like a plague of locusts in the background, I want to show you this. Ignore the GV60 for a minute. Ignore the quite sexy Genesis concept car. There's this very strange screen here, which looks digital, but is actually loads and loads of kind of little plastic discs that are forming a mosaic that's animated. And it's very beautiful, but they can't turn it off. So great piece of technology, not ideal for shooting a video, but there you go. If you can hear that rustling in the background with not being invaded by insects, it is the world's weirdest wallpaper. So far then, the GV60 is seeming like a reasonably handsome, but ultimately not that exciting electric crossover, but not so fast because I haven't told you yet about drift mode. This thing, the 429 horsepower top of the range version, which is good for 0 to 60 in four seconds, will have a mode buried in the touchscreen that sends more torque to the rear wheels and lets you actually power slide this sensible family crossover. Don't think that Ford are offering that on the Mustang Mach-E somehow. And speaking of going stupidly fast, there's more of that going on in here as well. We've got a green button here on the steering wheel that says boost on it. And if you press that, the car will go into this kind of overboost mode and give you max overtaking power for 10 seconds. Just another way that manufacturers like Genesis trying to make electric cars more fun, trying to make the idea of not having an engine not feel like you're missing out on excitement. But I'm gonna leave going quick alone for a minute and talk about stuff that's happening when you're sitting still because I can't remember last time I sat in an interior where the designers have just gone so crazy. Let me talk you around some of this. So, problem number one in your electric car, how do you know it's running? You can't hear an engine, of course. Normally there's some jingle to let you know when you've pressed the on button, the car has reacted. But Genesis have done something a little bit different. Look down here, this odd bauble is called the crystal sphere. It's an odd centerpiece to have on your dashboard, but if I put my foot on the brake here and press the start button, look at that. Now it's a gear selector, it's flipped completely over and you've got this quite cool Star Trek style control for putting the car into drive and reverse. And then of course, when you put her into park, 
and you turn it off again, it goes back. I mean, if this thing starts at 40,000 pounds, I don't care how much this has cost. If it's 35,000 just to engineer that, oh, absolutely worth it. But if you're worried that they've gone so mad on the gear selector that the rest of the interior will make no sense, then fear not, because besides the incredible octopus down here, it's actually relatively sensible. I mean, you've got actual buttons for the climate control. That's always helpful. Actual buttons on the steering wheel, no touch sensitive nonsense. Paddles, of course, these are adjusting the regen braking. Still got normal indicator stalks. We still have a round steering wheel. You can't find that in a few Teslas these days. And then the GV60 has got new screens. This is kind of a headline act. Unlike the Hyundai Ioniq and the Kia EV6, this has got a kind of curved bezel sort of rotated towards the driver like that. And the interfaces are just faster. It just reacts more quickly. And there's some really cool graphics going on in here. The settings menu allows you to kind of swipe through a 360 model of the car. I mean, that's just cool. It's just something that people are gonna look at when they get in the car and think, hmm, this does feel like an expensive bit of kit. Of course, what makes a car feel really expensive are the materials. I know you don't have smelly vision, but take it from me, I don't find Hyundai's the nicest smelling cars, if I'm quite honest with you, but this has a rather expensive aroma. And then the shut lines on everything, the materials, we've got this kind of knurled finish here on the center console. Here we've actually got an iDrive style dial and some home and menu buttons. So you don't have to use the touchscreen if you don't want to, you can just do it down here. That feels like you're cracking a safe. That has been put together really beautifully. And all the controls just feel really well put together. Maybe there's a little bit too much plastic pretending to be metal, but overall, absolutely feels a cut above what you've normally had from Korea. Now, of course, when you're platform sharing with an electric car, it's good news if the cars you're based on are already really excellent because you inherit a good battery, for example. That's what the GV60 does. By borrowing bits from the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, we've got a 77 kilowatt hour battery in here and it does the 350 kilowatt very rapid charging if you can find one so from 10 to 80 percent charge a gv60 can do that in just 18 minutes since we're talking about batteries we obviously have to mention range don't we the best case scenario for a gv60 if you go for the rear drive model 280 miles you go for a four-wheel drive model that's about 249 miles. And if you go for a GV60 performance with the upgraded motors, and this is before you start using drift mode, best you're gonna get is about 240 miles. And that is, well, it's a long way off a Tesla, isn't it? But a Tesla doesn't have a rotating gear selector, does it? Other technical touch. I haven't seen this on a car before. You see this rectangle in the plastics. Unremarkable, isn't it? But behind there, there is a facial recognition camera and in just the same way that your phone can look at your face, see it's you and unlock the screen, the GV60 can look at your face and unlock the car. Now I don't know if this means that your twin can steal your car or if you grow your beard or change your hair then you're locked out for the weekend but it's an interesting feature and that's not the end of this car's AI abilities because inside there is biometric security. Now I've seen this before on the Mercedes EQS, but it's interesting that Genesis has nicked it already. There's a fingerprint sensor on the center console. You tap that, the car recognizes who's getting in. It immediately adjusts your profile, your driving position, where you want the mirrors, what you want on the stereo. The car always knows who is driving it. So keep that little bit clean. I mentioned this rather lovely clamshell bonnet, didn't I? First thing for a Genesis, but underneath it, not a load of space, certainly not compared to that car beginning with T that I'm not going to mention again. You get a wheelie bin and under that, just about space for a cable. So useful for not cluttering up with your shopping in the back, your designer shopping, of course. After all, if you've got one of these, you only shop at the poshest outlets, but not necessarily the most practical electric car in the known universe. Now it's fair to say, isn't it, that many have tried to succeed in the premium car game of late, electric or not. And well, do you remember Infinity? I don't, they've pulled out of the UK entirely. And even a Heartland brand like Jaguar or Lexus, who've been at it for decades, have struggled against the onslaught of the Germans. So maybe this is the right way to go. You take a fundamentally sound EV platform with clever charging capability and good performance, 
you cram it with weird and interesting gimmicks, and then you cover it in interesting, slightly zany styling. I mean, maybe they're onto a winner here. Maybe this Genesis could be the start of something. Right, we've been very well behaved looking at this practical family crossover, but I couldn't bring you all the way to this posh Genesis showroom in Hudson Yards, part of New York City, without showing you this, because wow. This is the future of Genesis electric cars that comes after the present. I am right on board. Welcome to the X Coupe. And this is a concept car in the classic sense. There's no performance data, there's no Nürburgring time. It's all about the looks and I mean, I love them. It's part Polestar 1, maybe some Aston Martin Lagonda in there. I mean, why can't BMW build stuff that's this good looking anymore? This is Genesis saying, yeah, we're gonna have electric cars in the future, but why does a flagship need to be a big SUV? Why could it not be a classic svelte, long bonnet, coupe with some GT credentials? So if Genesis is the next big thing, and if they do need an electric flagship, I really, really hope it's this because, oh, wow.